Hey guys, today we are gonna look at how we can make some epic rock type in three simple steps. How many rock puns do you reckon we get into this one? Let's rock out without. <clears throat> R19 arrived at my door the other day and to say I was excited is an understatement. I was stuck between a rock and a hard place, trying to come up with a way to create text that looked like it was made up of these boulders, but I still wanted to have full control over my text. With R19, the answer is now only just a stone's throw away. In this tutorial, we are gonna take a look at the new detailing and glue options that have come with the new Vernoy Fracture update. We'll lighten texture our scene, and then we'll take it into Lightroom for some final adjustments. If you wanna rock, we rock. If we wanna roll, we roll. But we don't care how we... Hey guys, so like I said, we're going to have a look at making some epic rock type inside Cinema 4D, but still have live text. We can edit this at any stage we want. So our first step is going to be to grab a Mo text object. So I'm going to center align my text here and grab a nice font that's going to be nice and bold for us and DIN tends to work nicely. I'm going to change our text and just do an O like you saw in the thumbnail. Great, so now that we've got this here, let's start framing it up. Now I want our text object to appear nice and large. So what I'm gonna do is grab a camera and change my focal length to 24. And this is gonna allow us to create the illusion of looking up at our text object. I'm gonna drop a plane into our scene and this will be our floor. All right, let's change a few things in our Mo text here. Let's give ourselves a bit more depth and then I'm gonna add a fillet cap to both the start and end here. Now what we need here is some nice smooth geometry. So if I hit NB, that will reveal our polygons for us. And then we can come into our Mo text object and change our spline to subdivided. And now you can see this is starting to give us that smoother surface. We just need to do the same to our face, start to add a bit more geometry to that as well. So let's change our type here to quadrangles make it a regular grid, and then we can just play with the width a little bit to a size that looks good, and about 14 centimeters seems to be working nicely for us. Now the last thing on this step is just to click Create Single Object, and what this is gonna do is bind our caps to our edges. Now step two is to drop this bad boy into a Vernoy fracture. And what this will do is start to fracture our object and create these nice shapes for us. What I'll do is offset my fragments a little bit here, just so you can see that we get some nice shapes inside our letters as well. Now the magic of this technique is all in the detailing. So if I enable detailing and jump out of my camera here, I'm gonna show you what this starts to do. If I apply noise surface, that'll start to offset those cuts for us and make, and make nice organic shapes. And you can see when I uncheck keep original surface, this starts to displace our text and we now get this nice chunky detailed blocks. I'll offset my fragments again here, just so you can see that detailing is also applied to the inside of these fragments. Now step three is to drop this Renoi fracture into a subdivision surface. And great, now we've got these boulders all stacking on top of each other to create our letter here. Now if I zoom in, we're getting a little bit of pinching and we can clean this up a little bit. So if I jump back into my Vernoy fracture and come over to my detailing and play with this maximum edge length. And that'll start smoothing out those subdivisions for us. And look at that, we've now got this great detail in this letter. These great big chunky boulders all stacked on top of each other. And I've always wanted to be able to create this look, but still be able to swap out our text at any moment. Now these fractures are being generated through the source here. 
And you can see if I start playing with our point amount, this will start generating more fractures onto our letter here. Now this is great, but what I like is our big fragments, but perhaps we wanna create some smaller fragments that just happen in the top corner. So to do that, let's add another distribution source. And now we've got another source also adding fragments to our letter here. We can come down to the transform and by just moving this along Y and X, we can reposition it into that top corner so our fractures are only applied to that position. I'll jump out of my camera, spin around a bit here, and now you can see we're now generating all these extra fragments just in this top corner. Let's increase our point amount and this is looking great. Look at all these small fragments. Now we've got these great little smaller fragments as well as those bigger fragments on the other side of our letter. I'll jump back to my camera and this is looking, this is looking great. And what I love is we've been able to keep our Mo text live. So at any point we can swap out our text and that is so powerful. Now I want to show you how I applied a simple texture to this to start to build it up. And the way we're gonna do this is by using an image. So let's double click in our material editor, make a new material, and then in the color channel, I'm gonna load in this concrete texture that's really rough and grungy. And I'll pop a link down below and you guys can go and grab this exact same one. Now I'm gonna copy this image into our bump channel as well. Click on that and then I'm just gonna increase our black point. And what this is doing for us is applying a bit more contrast to our image and this will enhance our bump. Come to the reflectance channel, I'm just gonna add a Beckman, add a bit of Fresnel, and I'm gonna blur this, give it a bit of roughness, about 15% should do us nicely. I'll drop this texture onto our Vernoy fracture, and I'll jump out of my camera and zoom in a bit here. Now at the moment, we're getting this swirly pattern, it's just not looking quite right for us. So let's change how our material is being projected onto our text here, let's change it. We'll change it to cubic, and then I'm gonna come down and change my length on both my U and V to about 50% and make this texture seamless. Now sometimes it won't live update for you, so just toggle that Vernoy fracture on and off, and this is looking really good. We've got this rough, grungy texture on our rock, and this is a great base for us to start building this up. Let's add a HDR Studio rig to our scene here so we can get a rough idea of what we're working with. I'll drop in one of their HDRs from their road trip pack, insert some render settings, hit render, and have a look at what we're dealing with. Now already this is starting to look really cool. We've got these great big fractures, these tiny little fractures in the top corner there. This is a great organic look. And like you saw, we can just swap out our text and it's live the whole time, and that's great. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, the Vernoy Fracture has updated with it with this geometry glue, and this is great. So let's enable geometry glue and add a glue fall off. You can see what that's done is added a fall off object into our scene, and instantly all our cracks have disappeared, and we've just got this one great big rock, and this is pretty cool. Now this fracture works like any other, we can give it a fall off. So let's change it to linear, we'll change our orientation to plus Y, and then I'm just gonna decrease our scale a bit. And now with this fall off selected, I can move this up and down on Y, and you can see our fracture start snapping back in. And what's really cool is we can animate this fall off and animate our fractures cracking on to create a really cool look. So let's see how we're gonna do that. Let's pull it all the way up above our text so we've just got this one solid object. And then I'll apply a keyframe at zero. I'll move forward 90 frames and now pull it beneath our text and you can see all those fractures start snapping back on. And I'll just apply another keyframe there. I'll add a few more frames to our scene, increase our timeline a bit, perhaps move that keyframe along just a little bit to add it, just to slow this animation down a bit. Let's hit play and now with that fall off, passing through our text object, those fractures start snapping into place. Let's turn back on our subdivision surface and now those rock, and now we've got our rock texture back and this is looking really cool. We'll have a look at this again and you can see our fall off comes passing through from the top, adding in all our fractures, animating them on and it'd be really cool to create this look and then perhaps add some dynamics at the end. You can see them all fall down. 
So I encourage you to push that a bit further and really see where you can take this. But one thing I was having a bit of a play with to get a really cool effect was to add a delay effector to our Renoi fracture. So with that selected, I'll come up to MoGraph effectors and add a delay effector. And what I'm gonna do is change my mode to spring, but really decrease my strength. Only about one or 2% is all you're gonna need for this. And I'll show you why. Once I hit play, you can see our fractures start bouncing all around our scene. But this isn't quite what I wanted. What I wanted to do was just get a little bit of extra movement where we added in those additional fractures. So what we can do is also add a fall off to our delay effector. Now this time I'm gonna change my mode to sphere, reposition it so it's in the top corner of our text and then just start scaling it down and we'll have another look at what that looks like. I'll hide our delay for a second, hit play and see what we've got now. That fall off starts passing through our text, we get our fractures coming in, that delay starts bouncing our fractures around a little bit but that delay is probably still having a bit too much effect on our bottom fractures for me. So what I'll do is grab my delay, decrease that strength to 1% and then just scale our fall off down a little bit more. And now that delay is only having effect on a few of those fractures and I quite like that. Just to add a little bit of extra movement, nothing crazy, just some secondary animation. And great, this is just one of many things you can do with the new geometry glue in the Renoi fracture. Now, for this next bit, I would encourage you to make a copy of your setup here because we are going to make this editable. So with our Renoi fracture selected, I'm going to hit C, collapse that open, and now by hitting C, we've created individual objects for each of our fractures. Now, in the thumbnail, you saw that a couple of my pieces had fallen to the ground and I had done just this. Hit C on that Renoi fracture and then just select a couple of the fractures in the viewport and start to reposition them and rotate them so they look like they've organically fallen to that position. So I'll grab one from the back, rotate it around a bit, and I'll also grab this one from the front and pull that down and rotate that around. You can see I'm doing this with my subdivision surface turned off and that's allowing it and that's allowing my viewport to move a bit quicker, but it also allows me to select these fractures with ease. If my if my subdivision was selected and I tried to select individual fragments it would actually select the whole subdivision surface. So with that turned off, it makes this far easier. I'm just jumping into my four views, rotating these fractures around a little bit, just so they look like they're resting on the ground. Turn back on our subdivision surface, hit render, and let's have a look at this now. We've now got these great cracks and fractures, and but just by removing a couple of these points, we get to have a look at the inside of this object and how our fractures are all interacting. And this is creating a nice, great shape for us, something that would be really hard to model without this technique. So what we'll do, we'll jump over to a scene that I prepared earlier, and this is the exact scene you saw from that thumbnail there. This is built the exact same way you guys just saw, except I've added this sweep nerve, just wrapping a circle around the spine to create this gold bar through the center of my text here, just to add a little bit of a secondary element. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is this is lit and textured the exact same way we just did. And I wanna show you why we need to take this into Lightroom to really enhance these materials. So now that we're here, I'll hit render, take it over to Lightroom and catch up with you guys in just a second. Great, so our render's done and I'm really happy with the result here. These fractures are looking really good. We've got some nice organic shapes all stacking on top of each other. But the reason we've come into Lightroom is I wanna show you how we can really enhance these materials now. Now Lightroom is great. When you're in the develop mode in Lightroom, it gives you these, it gives you these tools in the right hand panel. And what I do is literally work top down adjusting these sliders to create a look that I'm happy with. Literally going step by step adjusting my image by increasing the exposure, adding some extra contrast, playing with those highlights and shadows, we can absolutely change our image. I'm just balancing our sliders here to create a look that I'm really happy with. You can see as I start to increase our clarity here, it really starts to add a lot of detail into our rock. And we'll come back to the clarity bar in just a moment. Now what's great in Lightroom is, is we can really hone in and add some sharpness and then we can even go in and add a bit of grain just to make this feel a bit more like a photo. We can start dialing up our colors as well. These rocks got this nice blue hue to it. So what I think is we try and enhance that a bit. So in our shadows, I can start to 
increase our saturation, and then just play with our hue to select a blue that complements our rock that we've started to create here. And nice, this is starting to look really cool. And now when I zoom in, we're getting all this great detail in our rock, and this is starting to look really cool for us. Now if I hit Y, and that'll bring up a snapshot of where we were when we left Cinema 4D, and look how much we've enhanced our rock here. Look at all this extra detail we've been able to bring out of this render. Now I said we'll jump back into the clarity. Now the clarity bar is your best friend when playing with this rock texture, in my opinion. We can really start dialing this up to really create, to create some nice contrast between our rock here, get it really rough and dirty. And look at that, look at that before and after. I'm really happy with this, this is looking great. Perhaps we could pull back some of those blues and get rid of a little bit of that vibrance, but you can see we can just start going absolutely crazy in Lightroom, adjusting this, tweaking this, just so we're really happy with that final product. So I hope you guys can take something away from this. Go and have a bit of a play. Make sure you, make sure you always take your renders from cinema into some post-compositing, whether that be After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, and really start to enhance your textures and start to see the potential of your renders. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you again real soon. Cheers.